Shu is not here for this territory. I am here for you. Prime Minister, you called for me? Yes. I wish to pass all of my knowledge unto you. I see it in you. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Out channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters out of the latest game. Coming at number 16, we have one of the most passionate and tragic characters of the series, Jiang Wei. Jiang Wei is a general of the Three Kingdoms era who first served Ma Zun. He surrendered to Shu when his station was attacked and was praised by Zhu Liang. Jiang Wei took it upon himself after the Prime Minister's death to keep waging war with Wei in the north, and even with Liu Shan surrendered to Deng Ai, Jiang Wei would oppose Wei until his death. He is Zhu Liang's lone and trusted successor in Roman to the Three Kingdoms and one of the novel's tragic figures. So Zheng Wei has been in the Dynasty Warriors series since Dynasty Warriors 2 and he has had quite a bit of changes to his personality, his weapon style and appearance throughout the games. But before we jump into all that, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Zheng Wei ranks all the way up here at number 16. In the first popularity poll consisting of about 75,000 total votes, Zheng Wei received 909 of those votes putting him at the 33rd spot. In the second popularity poll, he's going to jump up to the 24th position. And then in my personal rank, he's going to jump all the way up to the 16th position. So for me personally, Jiang Wei is among one of the highest characters for me personally because I've always liked Jiang Wei from the first game he was playable up until now. There are a couple of fallacies with the character that I don't particularly like. And I know there is a general bias of hatred towards Jiang Wei because of the way his character develops. But for me personally, I've always liked Jiang Wei. I've always was drawn to his weapon style and the way he fights. His weapon style in Dynasty Warriors 8 and 9 is actually one of the main styles that I use for my created characters. It was always a style that I was drawn to and I've always enjoyed playing. So that's why he's so high up for me personally because I genuinely like Jiang Wei. Now before we jump into how he's changed within the series, let's talk a little bit more about Jiang Wei for people who don't know. So Jiang Wei is a very interesting character. He has a lot of content revolved around him and he's been in the game since Dynasty Warriors 2. He is a pretty pivotal part of the Dynasty Warriors series. And he plays a big part, unfortunately, in the fall of Shu. But like I said, Zheng Wei was a military general of the state of Shu during the Three Kingdoms period of China. And he originally served under Wei before he was distrusted by the administrator of that time, Ma Zun. Because of that distrust, Zheng Wei ended up defecting to Shu. And Zhu Ge Liang highly regarded Zheng Wei and appointed him as a general in Shu. After Zhu Ge Liang's death in 234, Zheng Wei would continue to serve as a military commander. And he eventually rose to the highest military rank of general in chief. He continued Zhu Ge Liang's legacy of waging war against Wei by leading another 11 million military campaigns against them. However, Jiang Wei's campaigns were relatively constrained in terms of both scale and duration due to Shu's limited resources and inadequate food supplies, as well as internal political fault lines. In 263, when Wei launched a massive invasion of Shu, Jiang Wei led Shu forces to resist the invaders himself, defending Jiang Ge, which was under Zhang Hui's attack. While Jiang Wei managed to temporarily stall Wei's main force led by Zhang Hui, Dang Ai, another military commander of Wei, took a shortcut and showed up at Chengdu unexpectedly. Liu Shan surrendered to Deng Ai without putting up resistance and ordered Jiang Wei to surrender to the 
Wei General Zhang Hui. This event marked the end of Xu's existence, and in the following year, Zhang Wei instigated Zhang Hui to launch a rebellion in Chengdu and hoped to use this opportunity to gain military power and restore Xu. However, some of Zhang Hui's officers were unwilling to participate in the rebellion and started a mutiny, killing Zhang Wei and Zhang Hui. So like I said, Zhang Wei was a very passionate character within the Dynasty Warriors series. In the earlier games, he wasn't as passionate as they made him out to be in the later installments of the game. But he was a very intelligent general and very competent in war and strategies. And this fervent passion that he had for, you know, achieving the dreams that Zhuge Liang left behind for him was evident throughout most of the game. Unfortunately, this is where a lot of the hate for the character comes in. People end up seeing the hypocrisy of Jiang Wei's warmongering, which leads to the criticism. I do believe that Zhuge Liang plays a huge part in the reason that Jiang Wei's personality ends up heightening itself in the later installments in the game, and that's probably the reason why some people end up not liking Jiang Wei in terms of his personality. I can definitely see it getting very annoying and people becoming very critical of Jiang Wei's decision based on his emotions alone. But he was a faithful student to his mentor, and he was very respectful towards his other allies in Shu. Along with the criticisms that Jiang Wei would receive during his northern campaigns, he would also gain some adversaries to his northern campaigns because Jiang Wei's relentless warmongering was tearing up the lands of Shu and completely destroying their supplies. At the time, having seen year after year of battles against Wei, the people of Shu were growing tired of having to endure the costs and effects of the wars that Jiang Wei was causing. I would say the two major people within history that were opposed of Jiang Wei's campaigns was Fei Yi and Huang Hao. They definitely have their beef, and we'll discuss that a little bit more towards the relationship part of the video. But with that being said, we have a lot to cover here with Jiang Wei. Let's go ahead and jump into how he changed within the series. So starting off with Jiang Wei's appearance, his appearance within most of the games is actually pretty good. He goes through a significant change from Dynasty Warriors 5 to Dynasty Warriors 7. Again, he was made a playable character back in Dynasty Warriors 2, and he was part of every single game except for Dynasty Warriors 6. For some reason, they took Jiang Wei out of Dynasty Warrior 6. I'm not really sure why, but he wasn't part of the game at all. But from Dynasty Warriors 5 to Dynasty Warrior 7, he goes through a significant change in his appearance, but I would say it relatively fits him. I don't think a lot of people really dislike Jiang Wei based on the way he looks. I'm assuming it's mainly based on you know his personality and the way his personality has evolved throughout the game. But I can't complain about his appearance too much. I've always liked the way he looked. Now, moving on to his weapon style. So his weapon style is the biggest draw for me with the character because again it's a really fun style i really enjoy playing with Jiang Wei's weapon style. From Dynasty Warriors 2 to Dynasty Warriors 7, he switches between two weapons, which is like a spear and a pike. So the pike he had was called a trident, and the spear he had was called a chung. The movesets from Dynasty Warriors 2 to 5, even though he does do a switch with his weapon style, is pretty much the same. It's very, very similar in both games. And honestly, it was a lot of fun. I couldn't really complain about the way he fought in. The weapon had a very good AoE crowd control effect to it, and it just made it very easy to breeze through most of the stages with his weapon style. I had a lot of fun with his weapon style. Can't complain about it too much. I've always been a fan of like the spears and staffs and two-handed weapons. In Dice Warrior 7, he gets the spear back. It was okay. It was probably the worst style out of all the other games. It just wasn't as fun as it was in the previous games, and it just took a step down in Dynasty Warrior 7. And in Dynasty Warrior 8 and 9, I believe he gets the best weapon that fits him, and that's going to be the double-bladed trident. So this is the weapon that I specifically use for my created characters in the, you know, Empire spinoff modes because I really like the style of this weapon. I just, it's a lot of fun. It's very mobile. His trident is imbued with lightning, which made the weapon even more fun to play as. And for me, it's just a really fun style. His combos with the weapon is very easy to do. You can fly up, do your basic combo, you smash back down, and they kept that moveset in Dynasty Warriors 9. It was very easy to find that combo with him. I had a lot of fun with the style. The Musao attacks in all the games was pretty good. Uh, the earlier games was really good. Very good AoE. Very easy to clear out enemies. Can't really complain about it at all. It was a lot of fun. Again, going back to just, I like the double-handed weapons a lot. They're a lot of fun to play with. And his earlier styles were really fun. Dynasty Warriors 7, 8, and 9, he retains, I believe, the same basic moves in all of his Musao attacks. Dynasty Warriors 7, 8 was the same, I believe. And then Dynasty Warriors 9 was a combination of, I believe, his like rage attack and then like one of his Musao attacks. And I genuinely liked 
his Musao attacks. I thought they were really cool. I really like these Aerial Musao and the second Musao for his Trident in Dynasty Warriors 8. That is one of my favorite Musao attacks within the game. I'm not sure why. I just like the little lightning triangle he makes on the ground and it comes up. Tons of damage. It instantly usually kills the officers and uh, I have a lot of fun with it. One of my favorite Musao attacks of all time. And then again, the Aerial Musao, a lot of fun. He just imbues the spear or his trident with lightning and then throws it on the ground. Tons of damage. AoE. Clears out enemies. Can't complain about his Musao attacks at all. I thought they were awesome. And that, again, for me, is the main draw for the character. That's why he's so high up for me, because this is the style that I love to play as. And it's just a lot of fun for me. Now, moving on to his voice acting. His voice acting in most of the games is pretty good. The later games is a lot better than the earlier games. Dynasty Warriors 3 and 4, I believe he had two different ones. And they were okay. Now it's our turn to attack. I can no longer return to Wei. I shall do as you ask. To be honest, I didn't really notice the voice acting in Dynasty Warriors 3 and 4, but now that I've kind of like listened to them, I didn't, you know, I didn't really particularly like them in Dynasty Warriors 3 and 4, but it was okay. Dynasty Warriors 5 was pretty good for him. Am I worthy of such an honor? And then Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, he gets the same one, and honestly, that's the best voice actor for him. I am Zhong Wei! So long as I stand, this land shall never fall! And then he gets a new one in Dynasty Warriors 9. The Prime Minister carried on the will of Master Liu Bei and fought for a world without grief. But for me personally, I like, you know, Dynasty Warriors 7 8. I know that that's probably where people started to really hate him because they really took the passion of that character and spit it out into his voice acting and the lines and benevolence and virtue and I can't stop fighting until, blah, 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 you know, all, yeah, I get it. But his voice acting in those games was really, really good. I think it really showed unwilling to quit, unwilling to give up, doing whatever it takes in order to bring, you know, his fallen master's dreams to fruition. I know people don't really like this character and sometimes his personality can get pretty annoying but that voice actor for Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8 really brought that passion out and Dynasty Warriors 9 it was okay uh, I believe Dynasty Warriors 5 was a little bit better if I had to rank them I thought it was okay in Dynasty Warriors 9 it wasn't too great but you know after playing through so many Musao modes and so many stories and hearing the voice over and over again it kind of grows on you so but yeah his voice acting was just you know it, it was okay for him I, I just think the best one for him was definitely Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8 now moving on to his significant battles his relationships and his death let's start off with his significant battles he's got a few significant battles within the game and then he's got kind of one i guess you know outside the game which ends up leading to his death but we'll start off with the ones in the game the most important ones within the game is the battle of tian shui the battle of wuzhang plains the battle of didao and then obviously the fall of shu when you know wei invades chengdu so starting off with tian shui very important battle for him because this is the battle where you know, Jiang Wei becomes a part of the Shu Kingdom. He meets Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang recognizes his intellect and talent, and he wants to recruit Jiang Wei to his side. I believe in some games he actually mentions that the only reason he's there at Tian Shui is to recruit Jiang Wei to his side. I believe in history what happened was the distrust from Ma Zun led to Jiang Wei being basically barred and banned from coming back into the Wei Kingdom. He pretty much had no choice but to go and surrender to Shu. But very important battle because that pretty much sets up the rest of the story for Jiang Wei. Now moving on to the next significant battles that kind of relate to each other, kind of not. We have the Battle of Jie Ting, the Battle of Chen Song, and the Battle of Wu Zhang. Really the only two battles that Jiang Wei has before Zhuge Liang passes away. He's learning what he can from the Sleeping Dragon, soaking up as much information and knowledge as he can. And with Jiang Wei really looking up to Zhuge Liang and really idolizing this character, those battles are very important to him because when Zhuge Liang, in some of the games, when he steps back and, and is like, you're in control of this battle and when things go wrong or they're not going so well, Zhuge Liang is there to try and mentor and guide him in the right direction. And then the Battle of Wuzhong Plains, just leading up from those two battles, the death of Zhuge Liang happens at this battle, very significant for Jiang Wei because he loses the person that pretty much meant everything to him and is the reason that he is the way he is. So the Battle of Wuzhong Plain happens, Zhuge Liang dies during the battle, he passes off the commander to Jiang Wei, and Jiang Wei takes over, and from that point on decides to carry on the legacy of Zhuge Liang. Now moving on to his next battles, like post Zhuge Liang's death, the battles. So these are all the campaigns that Jiang Wei had to go through. The only battle that's really significant in all the campaigns is the Battle of Didao. The, all the other battles he had, he lost every single one of them. And the reason that's important is because that's what, you know, would lead to Jiang Wei's downfall and pretty much the downfall of Shu. He was so adamant of pushing the northern campaign that he inherited from Zhuge Liang that he was blindly, he wasn't really taking into consideration of the people 
people that were being affected because of how many how much he was going to war. I believe he was going to war like every year, just constantly going to war, draining the land of its resources, and the people were getting tired, and of course losing all those people in war and battle and all that. He would gain a lot of enemies during this time. It would eventually lead to his downfall. But the Battle of D-Dow was probably the only significant battle within those campaigns because it's the only battle that he actually kind of won. Within the games, I believe he was on the verge of like really securing a big victory when one of the characters, when someone from Chengdu basically says, hey, we need help, something's happening. So they retreat back and then they get back and Liu Shan's like, what are you talking about? It, everything's fine. So that's important because it was like the first time that Zheng Wei was actually on the verge of winning and somebody within the ranks basically spread a false rumor to basically shut down his campaign, which we'll talk a little bit more in the next section. Now, moving on to his last two battles, they're pretty much the same battle, but it's important to talk about, I guess, both of them because they're in like different places. So we have the Battle of Zheng A and Chengdu. So the Battle of Zheng A, and hopefully I'm saying that region right, was basically a region outside. It was kind of away from Chengdu, like the capital of Shu. And uh, basically at this battle, he was fighting against Zhang Hui, pretty much his forces against Zhang Hui, and he was holding them off. He was, you know, he was stalling them pretty well. However, during that battle, Deng Ai had taken a shortcut, completely bypassed that battle and went straight for Chengdu. By the time he got to Chengdu, he broke through the gates, killed the defenders, and then he got to Liu Shan, who surrendered immediately. Once Liu Shan surrendered immediately, he ordered Zheng Wei to surrender as well, and the Shu Kingdom came to an end. Very important battle because it's the end of the Three Kingdoms period, it's the end of the game, and unfortunately Zheng Wei was unable to do anything about it because he was not in the capital. He was away, staging a defense somewhere else. Now moving on to his relationships, so we're going to talk about his relationships real quick, and then we'll talk about his death. So starting off with the most significant relationship within the game is obviously going to be with Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang, the sleeping dragon, the reason he's part of Shu, the reason that pretty much Zheng Wei has a story is because of Zhuge Liang. I believe he is the reason that Zheng Wei becomes so hated and becomes so fervent with his desire to bring down Wei. It's Zhuge Liang's fault. Meaning that Zhuge Liang was giving this advice of like, you know, build this land of virtue, build a land of benevolence. And because Zhuge Liang was at the end of his lifespan, he didn't really have the ability to really rein Zheng Wei in. You know, Zhuge Liang dies, that passion that Zheng Wei and everything that, you know, Zhuge Liang set up to that point now gets ignited by like a hundredfold and Zheng Wei takes it to the extreme and destroys Xu in the process. A very tragic sequence of events for Zheng Wei, but if he just had a little bit more control of his personality and passion, and maybe just thought a little bit more clear, wasn't so like narrow-minded on how he had to destroy Wei, perhaps things would have been a little bit better for him. But a very close relationship with Zhuge Liang all the way up until his death. He learned everything he can from him. He was his idol, he was his everything. There was never any doubt, there was never any hesitation, anything that Zhuge Liang needed or said, it was done. Zheng Wei was there for him, which I do commend for the character. Zheng Wei is a very loyal character. Even after the fall of Shu, he's still trying to find a way to restore Shu. Like, that's how adamant he was about, you know, Zhuge Liang and the dreams of benevolence and virtue. Now, moving on to his relationship with Liu Shan, he also added into that blind passion that Zheng Wei just couldn't control. The reason I say that is because Liu Shan, he gave Zheng Wei too much power. By the time he wanted to like talk to him about it or question like, you know, why are you doing this? It was almost offensive to Zheng Wei. There is a cutscene within Dynasty Warriors 9 where Liu, Liu Shan, he's just asking him a question, trying to figure out why he's pushing it the Northern Campaign so far. In being so passionate about war, you're actually the opposite of a benevolent person. I believe there were times where within the games, he would hint at Jiang Wei by saying things like, you know, never forget the true goal of virtue and benevolence that my father and Zhuge Liang left behind. I believe that Liu Shan was trying to say, listen, you know, this is your third or fourth Northern Campaign and, you know, good luck in the battle, but, you know, you're going to war so much. Is this really how a world of benevolence is supposed to be achieved? But instead, Jiang Wei saw it as, yes, I'm going to do whatever I can, work as hard as I can to build a world of benevolence. So those two characters are very significant because they had the biggest impact on Jiang Wei. Because Liu Shan was giving him so much power, making him the highest, you know, general in chief, you know, grand commander of the army. Jiang Wei had a lot of leeway and can do what he want, which enabled him to go on so many northern campaigns so many times. So now we're going to move on to the more minor relationships. We have his relationship with Huang Hao and Fei Yi. So we have two NPCs I want to talk about real quick because I think it's very important to Jiang Wei's story. Both characters definitely resisted his northern campaigns, especially after failure after failure after failure. They were basically speaking up for the people at this point, like, hey man, we've been doing this for so long, nothing's happening, we're not making any progress, we should stop, we should focus on inter internal affairs 
affairs. We should focus on building our defense and stop wasting our resources. Before Huang Hao rose in power, it was mainly Fei Yi was the main power in the Shu government. Now, within the games, I believe it is Liu Shan who says this and not Fei Yi. But Fei Yi is recorded to have told Zheng Wei that we aren't as brilliant as the Imperial Chancellor. If even he can't stabilize the Empire, what makes you think we can do it? Sometime after that, Fei Yi would end up being assassinated during a party. Their assassin was a Wei civilian captured in battle by Zheng Wei. There are theories around that Zheng Wei was the one that set him up to be assassinated because after he was assassinated, it allowed Zheng Wei to gain greater control over the Shu military and continue waging war against Wei. So I don't think Fei Yi really plays a big role within the game itself. He doesn't really come out and say anything, but Huang Hao within the games definitely comes out and says something. Huang Hao is a character who was favored by Liu Shan and he gradually gained power in the Shu government and dominated the political scene. Within the games, these two are arguing about whether or not to continue the Northern Campaign. Huang Hao is on the side of like, we need to stop doing the Northern Campaign so Liu Shan can live in luxury. Some people called him out on that, but Huang Hao's main stance was that Zheng Wei was wasting the resources of their kingdom and that he was wasting his time with these Northern Campaigns. Revisiting the Battle of Di Dao really quickly. So in the games, again, Di Dao was the battle where Zheng Wei and the Shu forces were on the verge of winning when somebody told them to come back to Chengdu because something was happening. I believe it was Huang Hao who did this because when he's confronted about this in the game or when it's mentioned in the game, Huang Hao gets all defensive about it. It's, but regardless, Huang Hao and Zheng Wei were always butting heads up until the fall of Shu. Within the games and within history, Zheng Wei tried to warn Liu Shan about it like, hey, I'm going to invade Shu. We should prepare for battle and be ready defensively. And unfortunately, Huang Hao was on the side of, I didn't hear any reports about an invasion and was advising Liu Shan to ignore his message. Now quickly moving on to his minor relationship that he has within the game. Uh, the minor relationships that he has within the game within the kingdom are people that are underneath him and look up to Jiang Wei for guidance and commanding and look at him as pretty much a beacon of light of making the land of benevolence and virtue come to light. Like the main minor people in that is Shahoba, Xing Sai, Ma Dai, Guan Yin Ping, Bao Sanyang, and Guan Suo. So these are the main people that he has a minor relationship with. He's commanding them. He's always conversing with them, figuring out what to do next, and relying on these officers to help him achieve his goal of achieving benevolence and virtue for the kingdom of Shu. Most of these officers are taking part in the battles where he's losing in the northern campaigns. Of course, during these battles, some of the officers end up dying and he ends up losing people. But out of all of those minor relationships, he probably has the closest relationship with probably Jing Sai and Ma Dai. These two at this point were like the highest in terms of experience. So he would go to them in terms of commanding and relying on them to get things done when he was attacking or whatever needed to be done. And then his last relationship I want to talk about is the relationship with Zhang Hui, and we're also going to talk about his death. So his relationship with Zhang Hui was not a friendly one. It was just in the terms of them pretty much, he was pretty much just using Zhang Hui. He was going to use Zhang Hui to pretty much restore Shu. When the fall of Shu happened and Zhang Wei was captured and arrested and everything, Zhang Wei sensed that Zhang Hui had the intention of rebelling against Wei and sought to exploit this opportunity to stage an uprising and restore Shu. So he instigated Zhang Hui's rebellion. He got Deng Ai arrested and killed. And with Deng Ai gone, Zhang Hui had control over Chengdu and the former Shu territories. However, some Wei officers who were unwilling to participate in the rebellion started a mutiny against Zhang Hui. Zhang Hui would then go to ask Zhang Wei, these men are causing trouble, what should we do? Zhang Wei told Zhang Hui to kill them. So Zhang Hui then ordered his men to kill the officers who refused to participate in the rebellion. A little while later, chaos would break out, there was fire all over the place, and the mutinying officers regrouped with their men and attacked Zhang Hui and Jiang Wei. Zhang Hui and Jiang Wei fought the mutinying soldiers and slew about five or six of them, but were eventually overwhelmed and killed. So Jiang Wei had a very tragic ending to his story. The games don't really cover it because, you know, it's after the Battle of Chengdu. You can see the seeds of rebellion starting to take shape, but they don't actually go over it. And unfortunately, Jiang Wei comes to a tragic end because of the passion that he had for creating a land of benevolence under Shu. But that's pretty much all I have for Jiang Wei here, guys. Again, he's a character that I've always liked to play as. It's unfortunate the way his personality has grown over the games, and people really don't like Jiang Wei because of that. The hypocrisy in his nature as a you know leader is very evident, and that's probably why people don't really like him. So Jiang Wei within the games was, you know, I thought he was a pretty interesting character. I've always liked Jiang Wei. I've always liked the way he fought. Uh, one of my favorite styles in the game. And because of that, he'll always be a highly 
ranked character for me. I think he had some really good moments within the game. There were some really good moments and cutscenes he's had within the game. I don't think anything outside the character's personality can really deter people from playing him. I just think his personality is a very big annoyance for most people. But that's pretty much all I have for Jung Wei here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about him down below. Do you like him? Do you hate him? Let me know down below. But that's all I have, guys. If you guys enjoy it, definitely appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.